Today, we're gonna to talk about something that I think is pretty cool, and that is how to fake motion blur. And this is something that I've done in a couple of my thumbnails that I've posted onto YouTube. So I thought, why not do a tutorial on it and never? So we're going to, uh, uh, we're gonna take a photo like this, and then we're gonna add the motion blur onto it to make it look like the cap is going really fast in Photoshop. So, oh, let's get to it. The first thing and most important thing that we're gonna do to take this photo is to make sure that the lighting is correct. And I'm thinking that we're gonna use like a two point lighting setup or maybe maybe like a three point lighting setup. I'm not entirely sure yet. The key light that I'm using is the Aperture 120D and it gives us this really like powerful output so that we don't have to crank up the ISO too much. So we're gonna have this right here and then we're gonna put this like right here. And the reason that I wanna have it like this is because this is gonna be our main light. And this is gonna be our fill light. And as you can see on my hand, we get some nice shadows on my hand already. And as for the fill light, I'm using the Godox SL60 together with the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2 that also has a grid on it. And this light is super, super prize worthy if you wanna have like a good video light to record YouTube videos or take some simple product photos with. Highly recommend it. From there. I'm gonna use this Sony a7 III together with the 24 millimeter G Master lens because I think that 24 millimeter is just wide enough to give you that wide field of view, but it doesn't distort the image too much as a 16 millimeter does. And it also gives us the possibility to get that 1.4 aperture so that we can keep the ISO as low as possible. I'm also gonna control this with my smartphone. So we're just gonna, oi, inget minnes go Twitter. Memory cord, memory cord, memory cord, or oh. click control with smartphone, connection, and then we want to open up imaging edge, and we're going to connect with A7 III, connect, start remote operation. Okay, all right, so the good thing now is that we got a perfect visual of what it looks like and how our shot is going to turn out. So I'm thinking that we're going to take two shots off this to make sure that we get one shot of the cap actually like being perfectly aligned in the air and then another shot where I'm standing like this so that we can like mask those two together when we jump into Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do is to try to get the framing right. So I'm thinking that right there. Oh, I think we have it. It's such a shallow depth of field when shooting at f1.4. And now I basically want to have a shot of my hand being like this, so it looks like I threw the cap, like so, you know? Now we have one photo of me, one photo of cat, and the final thing that we want to do is to take like one final photo that is going to be like used as the clean plate from where we can mask if we need to. Let's jump into the computer. So the first thing that I wanna to do to the photos is to do some slight adjustments to them in Adobe Lightroom to make sure that I can blend them together nicely when we jump into Photoshop, which we are going to do right now. So now that I have all my photos in Photoshop, the first thing that I wanna do is to create a new project. So I'm gonna hit Command N and I'm gonna create a new project that's gonna be that is gonna be 3,000 times 2,000 pixels, and we're gonna have color mode RGB, and we're gonna hit create. So now that we've created our new project, we want to go back to one of the photos, and then we're gonna unlock them down here, and then we're gonna hold Alt, and we're gonna drag it over to our new project, and we're gonna do the same thing to all the photos so that we get them in the same project. So as you can see here, we have three different layers visible right now. We have layer one, and this we're gonna name background. And then we have layer two, and this is gonna be arm. And then we have layer three, and we're gonna name that cap. And the first thing that I wanna do is to mask out the cap so that only the cap is visible from this layer. So we're gonna go over here, and then we're gonna choose the pen tool and we're gonna start setting a point right here so we're gonna click and drag 
to make sure that we get like a smooth curve. And then we're just gonna continue. And if you get to an edge where you only wanna adjust one of the handles, then you hold down Alt and then adjust it the way that you want it to. So we're gonna drop it up here and we'll just continue all the way around the cap. All right, so when you're done with placing out all the different points that you wanna cut out, you're gonna head over to Paths, and then we're gonna right click the Work Path, and then we're gonna choose Make Selection. And we're gonna choose a feather radius of three, and we're gonna hit OK. And then we're gonna go back to Layers. We're gonna make sure that the cap layer is selected and then we're gonna go, go down here and we're gonna press add layer mask. Ta-da! Oh, oh, that is cool, right? Now we got the cap all cut out and looks really good. And then we have like my hand going up there. But what we don't have is some motion blur. So now I wanna duplicate the cap layer. So I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate and then I'm gonna choose the cap and the arm layer and then I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna choose create a new group and then we're gonna duplicate this group and then we're gonna right click this and then we're gonna choose merge group so basically what I did is that I created a single layer from those two layers so this is basically the final piece that we have and what I want to do with this is that I want to add some motion blur to this and then have the cap layer on top of that. So we're gonna go up here to filters and then we're gonna choose blur and then we're gonna choose motion blur. And then we're gonna like make sure that we have the angle set so that it looks like I'm actually throwing so that the hand is moving the same direction. So we're gonna drag this up to like maybe 79 and then adjust the angle of it a little bit. We don't want to overdo it, like we want to keep it nice. So I'm thinking that 79 should be kind of good. So then we're going to hit OK. And now we are going to add a layer mask to this. And then we're going to make the group that we created beneath this layer visible. As you can see, nothing happened when we made that group visible. But if we start painting with a black brush onto this, layer then you can see that our cap is getting visible and everything beneath it is getting visible as well so we're going to increase the size of the brush to maybe like 400 and then we're going to paint onto the cap like some some around here you know what i actually do think this looks really good so what i want to do now is that i want to make sure that i can use this as a thumbnail so i'm gonna hit command c and i'm gonna go up here to make sure that this perspective is 16 by 9 and then we're gonna adjust it so that it looks good that looks pretty good we're gonna hit enter and now we're gonna add a curves layer to this and we're gonna drag up the mid-tones of this shot and then we're gonna like Drag down the blacks a little bit and up with the blacks. Then we're gonna choose the black brush and we're gonna increase the size to 1000. And then we're gonna paint over me so that I'm not like glowing through as much as I was. And then we're gonna duplicate this by hitting Command J. And then we're gonna make sure that layer mask is selected. And then we're gonna hit Command I. And now we're just gonna remove this and increase the blacks just a little bit. There we go. And then I also wanna add a hue slash saturations layer to like bump up the saturation a little bit and increase the lightness of it. You know what? I actually do think that this looks pretty good. And uh, this is before the composite and this is the after. So I really hope that you learned something from this video and that you enjoyed it because I thought it was like something that I wanted to share because I think it's so much fun playing around with the different stuff in Photoshop. And if you liked it, do give it a thumbs up because it does help a whole lot. And if you have not subscribed as of right now, then that would be highly appreciated. So thank you so much. And uh, oh, Peter from Sweden, have a good one.
So, excuse me. What? I, can I get a cap over here because my hair is crazy, right? All right, all right, but you gotta buy your own cap. Yes, I know. Yeah, I got you this time, all right? Nice. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you.